Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about Google Analytics 4, which is GA4, and that's the new Google Analytics, and how you can use it with your Etsy shop. Because honestly, there's not a huge amount that you can do with it, but there are some things that are kind of interesting and will definitely be useful. So I'm going to do this in different sections. I already did one video showing how to connect the code to your Etsy shop. And this is just going to be for Etsy. So if you have a website, I might do some more videos about it for websites. But if you're in the eShop Success Program or my SEO club for websites, then I will be doing more about websites in there. This is specifically for Etsy because it really is limited. And there's a lot of stuff that you don't even need to understand or know how to use in GA4 if all you use it for is your Etsy shop. So the first video that I'm going to do today, and I'm going to try to do these in sequence, is about definitions and what you like the dashboard, just what you see when you go on there. Please watch these in order because you're not going to understand and you're going to misinterpret things if you don't understand how Google Analytics defines certain words because it, it's not logical. It doesn't make logical sense and it is different from the way that Universal Analytics, which is the old system, define things. So let's go into my GA4 account for my Etsy shop. I'm going to be using my digital Etsy shop as an example. And then we're also going to look at some things from one of my blogs because their dashboard looks a little bit different. But let's go into my Etsy shop and get started. This is my digital Etsy shop, and it's not my main shop, but it has enough traffic in it that we'll be able to see some of the examples of things that I want to show you. Now, today I'm going to be talking about definitions and how Google Analytics kind of defines specific words. This is not going to be the same as the way that we kind of understood things in Universal Analytics, which is the older system. So pay attention and don't skip because you're really not going to understand things. I will try to keep this short. All right, so let's get right into it. And the first thing is the definition of users in Google Analytics 4 is different because the system here, what they're trying to do, the reason that they changed it is they're trying to track people more effectively and with less redundancy, like with less repetition. Because when Google talks about a user, they're not talking about a person, they're talking about a device and a browser, and they give each device browser combination a Google ID. So you'll see that in the URLs when we get into some of this, you'll see some of the URLs with the Google ID. It kind of, kind of tags your browser and your device. And what they're trying to do with this system is kind of track people more efficiently so they're not duplicating things. And it could be that somebody moves from their phone to their browser. Google wants to know that it's that same person using the same device and it's it just is messy. So number one, none of, the, none of these numbers are going to be right. They're going to differ from report to report and they're definitely not gonna be what you see in your Etsy stats. This I believe is filtered. Okay, this is for the last seven days. I know that my traffic is higher than this on Etsy because I see the Etsy stats but Google and Etsy are not looking at things the same way. All right. So you, you can't, you can't take the, and this says like for the last, look, the last 28 days, it says I had 306 users, but that's only because I just started tracking this with a new GA4 code. So it's only tracking from when you put the code in. So if you haven't installed your code yet, go look at the previous video that I posted in this playlist. I'll show you how to do that. It also shows you things that you don't need to pay attention to. And I'll, I will kind of touch on that in here. But it only tracks from the time that you install the code, not retroactively. So you have to install the code and then it will start gathering information. But we will use 28 days. Now, when you change the date on this, it doesn't necessarily change the date on all this other stuff. And sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, but usually with the cards, it doesn't. So there is usually, depending on what report it is, there will be a way to, to sort the whole thing by date up at the top. But if you're sorting by on the cards and you're changing the date, it doesn't change the date on the rest of them. All right, when you first come to your dashboard, now this is the home tab, also by the way. All right, so it'll show you things that you were on recently. So I could go to this report, that report. These are the kind of reports that I would go to over and over. So it's just a shortcut. You don't, and you can get over here too by going here. This is just some stuff that, you know, you might be interested in, you might not, but in, it's, it's the basic report. This dashboard, I don't think that you can customize this. Now up at the top, there's this little thing that says insights. You can click on this to get a little more information here and you can look at all this data, right? But we don't need to do that now. So I'm gonna click that out. Um, this is stuff that you don't really need to worry about with Etsy. Some of it you might be interested in, but again, this is not accurate. It really isn't. And it, it it's it's very frustrating because you want to know how many people come to your site. 
the event count is not sessions. Sessions is when someone comes to your website once, right? So if someone comes to your shop, that's a session. A user, I think that this defaults to active users. That's how Google Analytics uh, you know, defines a user. But then they also have new users and engaged users. There's active users, there's unengaged users. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of different definitions. The best advice that I have is to go up here and click on the question mark and just type in what you're looking for. So type in users and it will come up with the definition of how they define all the users. Okay, so they say that a user is a person who interacts with an app or site whose activities you measure with Google Analytics. That's not really helpful because we want to know the specific type of user. So let's put an active user. Just remember that this question mark thing is here. That's the that's going to tell you what the difference is because here we have, look, this is active users. It, and this tells you how to find it. Um, it. You know, an active user is, it's not exactly the same as a user, but they use user to mean active users. So, and, and new users is people that are coming to your shop for the first time. There's a lot of different ways that they define things. So just take all this with a grain of salt, basically. It's not critically important that you understand this if you're just using this for Etsy. Just know that these numbers aren't exactly right and you might be misinterpreting things. So go and check because they might change the definitions too. Who knows? Uh, it's They've changed the definitions for some terms between UA and GA4. Bounce rate is not the same thing. you know. So just be aware that all this is kind of take it with a grain of salt. Now I am gonna go over to my blog. This is my artisan shopping directory blog. And the reason that I wanted to show you this is that this is not going to be the same depending on how often you're on GA4, you're not gonna see the same thing. I haven't sorted anything here, but see now this is showing me users, users, views and conversions. So this isn't new users like on the old screen. They're showing me views, they're showing me conversions. Um, conversions is not sales. I don't sell anything on this site and I'll explain the definition of convert. Well, I'll tell you right now, a conversion is basically an event that you have told Google analytics that you want to track, or you think is important. And you do that in the admin panel. I, I'm not going to get into that in this video, but basically everything in GA4 is an event. Anything that happens on your website is an event. And a conversion is just an event that you've told it. I want to track this. So a conversion is not a sale. You cannot track sales on Etsy through Google Analytics because the sales on Etsy take place on Etsy's part of the website, not in our shops. So Etsy gets that information, we don't. So anytime you see conversion in GA4, just understand that that's not a sale. It's just an event, which is something that happened on your website that you have said, I wanna track this. So put that in the conversions. And I will show you how to do that. If you go into the admin panel, if you go to the conversion section, you can create a conversion event. Now, the one conversion event that Google Analytics sets up automatically and you can't get rid of is purchase. I don't think that you can delete this. Yeah, you, you can't get rid of this. So this is always gonna be there, but we're not gonna get that information from Etsy. So it, it'll sit there, but it's gonna say zero. Don't worry about it. Um, click, I think I must have set this as a conversion event. We're going to do conversion event. Let's say that I want to find a first visit, right? So we're going to do first visit as an event. Okay, we're going to click save. And now that is going to be a conversion. And it will track that for me under the conversions tab in the reports. Okay, I, you know, you can see this anyway. You don't need to have it as a conversion. But this is just kind of a shortcut for people who are doing heavy duty analytics, which we are not. But that's what a conversion is, essentially. It's not a sale. So just be aware of that. But I wanted to show you this. These cards will change if you see this little icon here, the stars. That means that Google has decided for you what it's going to show based on what you've looked at in the past. So this is Google's AI deciding what to show you. And on the other, like in my Etsy shop, this was not here. But in this card, it is. So that means that Google's AI is deciding what to show me. Now, see, they have users in there twice. So what you can do is you can go in here and choose your own event. So let's say I want an event. I want to look at um, events per session, okay? So that's the events per session. And that is how many things like clicks, scrolls, whatever Google defines as an event. 
And there are predefined events, those are automatic, and then you can turn on enhanced events, enhanced counts, or however they call that, again, in the admin panel. Don't worry about this stuff, because this is really, again, it's not something that you really need to know for Etsy. If you, if you really want me to do another video about this, I will, but I'm just trying to hit the stuff that you're going to need to know. And the stuff that you need to know is that the terms are not, like a conversion is not a sale. A user is not necessarily an, a person. It might be somebody, if it's a new user or an engaged user, it might mean a different thing. And it's just, you know, it's not something that you 100% need to know for Etsy because it's not the most valuable information that you're going to get from this report for your Etsy shop. Now, I did want to show you the real-time users. The, if you if you want to sit here and watch people in your Etsy shop, you can click view real-time, and this will show you what's going on in your Etsy shop right now. This is my website. This is one of my blogs, so this is not my Etsy shop, um, but it'll give you kind of a quick look at this. And this is, again, not 100% accurate, and there's reasons for that, which we don't really need to go into. Um, but it, this will show you where your audience is coming from. It'll, you know, you can kind of look at these reports. Now this report, let's see, it doesn't have the real time. All right, so what you can do here is click view user snapshot. What this will do is it'll choose someone from this group and you can't choose who you're looking at, but it's just like a random user snapshot. And what this will do is it will show you when they were on, it'll show you that if you click user engagement, it'll show you what they did on your site. Okay, so they came to the site, uh, the page, like it, it'll show you just stuff. If you want to get into this, that's fine. I, you know, again, this is not something that really is going to be super useful. And this is someone from Russia. So it might even be a bot. I don't know if it's a bot. I don't know if it's a person. It's this will just give you a quick overview. And if you want to go back here, let's see, let's go back. I don't know if it'll show you the same person if you click it again, or if it shows you someone else, but this, this is random. So this is someone who was in Spain and it, they have scrolled. They have gone on my website and they've scrolled down. That's the event that they have caused. They've done that action on my site. So that's basically what that is. And it's it's a curiosity, but it's not something that you need to sit and watch for hours because it's really not going to tell you that much about your Etsy shop. Now we're back in my Etsy shop and basically you get the homepage. This is, this is where you're going to show up. You know, when you show up to Google Analytics, this is what you're going to see. And it might be different. Remember that Google's going to move this around. So if it doesn't say exactly this, then don't worry about it. It just means that Google is looking at what they think you want to see and they're putting that there. Again, you can change this. If you go here, you can find whatever you want. Um, but just be aware that you can't look up revenue. You can't look up sales. You can't look up things like people putting stuff in the cart and then checking out because that's Etsy's system. It's not our shops. So there are limitations with Etsy, as you've probably figured out. Um, this explore thing here is if you want to build your own reports. And you can go here and build your own reports. There, there are ways to do this. You can use their templates. If you want to click template gallery, it'll come up with a whole bunch of different things. You can create your own, but there's really only one or two reports that in my opinion are really useful for Etsy. And I will go into those in further you know, future videos, the next ones that I do. Um, this advertising is really for people who are running Google ads. And unless you're running Google ads to your Etsy shop, and I don't even know how that would work as far as connecting. I, I don't know how that would work. And I don't know what data it would give you in here. I don't know that you can do that. But if you, you know, if you do, it might show up in this section. But we really don't need to worry about this. We don't need to worry about this section at all. The explore section, if you want to set up your own report, you can. But in the next section, I'm, I'm going to show you in the next couple of videos, we are going to go into the report section because this is really where the interesting stuff for Etsy happens. And I will actually look at tech in, and it's not, it's not both of these. It's just in the life cycle reports where the interesting stuff happens. You can go into, I think it's in the overview of the user attributes. And depending on whether you have Google signals turned on, I do not have it turned on. It will show you like where the city, where they, their gender interests and that kind of thing. The problem with Google signals, and you turn that on here in the admin section in data settings and data collection. Okay. If you turn this on, um, then number one, you have to tell people that you are 
collecting a little bit more specific information. So that should be in your privacy policy on Etsy. But it, it doesn't really give you all the information. And um, just make sure that you're going through everything and that you click the acknowledgement that you do have a privacy policy up. You know, I, I don't really... I don't really need to turn Google signals on um, because I don't care about the, you know, it, it's not something that's important to me, gender of people. And I also know that the, I'm trying to be nice about this. The Google's data gathering is extremely limited and they leave out a lot of information. That's the nicest way I can say it. It stinks. Their data gathering on this part stinks because they're relying on people to opt in and to take the privacy issues and just ignore them and let Google collect all the data that they want on them. So what you'll see is like for the for the location or interest or gender or any of that, if you click on that, it'll go through and you'll see that most of the information that they have on gender is unknown or it's unassigned. So they're really only telling you the piece that they know and it's generally a much lower percentage than the piece that they don't know. So that information is really in, it's it's incomplete and it's not really that useful. So anyway, um, I think between the previous video that I did about setting up your account and putting the code into Etsy and what you don't need to pay attention to, and this video, you've probably got an idea about a lot of things that you can't do with Google Analytics for your Etsy shop. But let's do, in the next couple of videos, we're going to do these reports that I did say were useful. We'll go into those, and I will show you kind of some fun tricks that you can do to find out where your traffic is coming from, even if it doesn't tell you directly where it's coming from. So make sure that you watch that. Give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next video.